Now, here's the question. What do we do? How do we respond? Isn't it cool? God's going to give us three plays from Satan. This is so cool. And he's going to give us three ways to respond. And you could go extrapolate and do the work yourself, but I almost think that these three responses coincide with the three attacks. You can go figure that out yourself. But there are three ways we respond, and this is, write this down, point two, the victory we have in, as a Christian. This is our victory as Christians, and it's threefold. Go back to verse 11. I want to show it to you again. Three ways to see this, and I like to write numbers in my Bible when I see list, but watch this. They, us too, they back then, us today, conquered him by the number one, blood of the lamb. Number two, word of their testimony. Number three, they didn't love their lives to the point of death. Threefold plan. Let me give it to you. Number one, the blood of Jesus. Our victory is in the blood of Jesus. Now, look at me. If you get nothing else, I want you to get this because this has always baffled me for years. I've always asked the question, why so much blood, God? You ever wondered? Because it's bothered me. Why so many deaths? Why so many innocent animals? You gotta remember, on Passover, it was speculated that they sacrificed, on Passover alone, 200,000 animals in one day. They said the blood was so deep, it would run in the streets like rainwater. Okay. So you had to back then like think, why so much blood? And you have to think that today. Here's why. Write this down. Blood is the currency of heaven. Okay. I want you to get this. Blood is the currency of heaven. Why? Because human sin and sin demands a payment for its action because blood keeps us alive. Here's how it works. In order for you and I to live, we have to have blood. If we lose the blood, we lose life. So the Jewish culture believed that to have life is to have blood and to have blood is to have life. Life was in the blood. That's why there's so many Old Testament sacrifices. God is showing the nation that since you sin, you should die. But if you bring this innocent animal and sacrifice, this animal takes the place of you. Does that make sense? So life was in the blood. And the reason there's so much death and blood in the Old Testament is because that's how much God hates sin. If Regan and Ryder and, and, and me were walking back then, it'd probably be Yochanan and uh, you know, Zechariah, probably back then. Come on, Zechariah and Yochanan, come on. And then, if, and then if we go to the pastor and they'd say, Daddy, why so much? Or Dad, don't say Dad. Dad, sorry. <laughs> don't correct me out. We don't call you Daddy, I know. I call my mom Mommy still. Anybody with me? Anybody still call their mom Mommy? David does, that's good. I'm not the only one. <laughs> she laughs at me. I'm a mama's boy. I don't care. Anybody with me? I don't care. I'll fight you if you don't like that. I'm a big mama's boy. I play, I play. Okay, but here's the thing. They would say to me, Daddy, why so much blood? And here's what I would tell them. I'd bend down and say, here's why. That's how much God hates sin. That's how much. That he would lead you to kill an innocent animal in your place where you should die. Now, what does that mean? Feel the way to this. It's no accident that the very color and the very ministry of Satan is blood, death. And yet at the same time, Jesus himself offered up his blood as the sacrifice to nullify Satan's attack. I just love this, feel the way to this. Let that sit in. Satan is trying to kill by taking out the blood and Jesus came and offered up his blood to thwart the attack of Satan. And here's what that means. Jesus's blood paid the penalty for all of our sin who believe, amen? Jesus's blood covers all of our transgressions who believe, amen? That's good news today. Number one, victory in Jesus. Number two, the testimony of believers. The testimony of believers. Uh, and yes, it is our testimony, but it's more than that. When uh, Satan or someone reminds you of your sin, which he does, he's good at doing that. When, when he reminds you of your sin or what you've done, remind him of what Jesus did. It's very practical. I want you to get this. So when Satan comes and says, man, you ain't, Robbie, you ain't nothing but a dirty, rotten sinner, right? You know what I'll say to him? If, 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 I, if I hear that, I'll say, you're right. I know that. Everybody knows that. But let me remind you, 
I'm thankful that I put my faith in a savior who gave his life for me and died for my sin, who doesn't hold that against me today. And by the way, because of that, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name, flee from me. That's how you respond, friends. That's how you respond. You don't sit agony and say, oh man, I can't believe I'm so negative, what's going on? You don't do that. You say, I'm standing on the word of God. You do it three ways, privately, publicly, and preaching. Privately, you do it with the way you live. We should, this is integrity, okay? Integrity is, I live like I talk. I live like I think, okay? Being disgenuous is when you say you're a Christian, you don't live like it. When you say you're gonna do something, but you don't do it, that's, that's, that's not integrity. Living with integrity privately is, walking in holiness and humility and honesty and truth, okay? That's privately. Publicly, get this. The battle is also fought publicly. What do I mean? It's fought when you and I, who have a voice, give a voice to the voiceless. It's you and I who look at those looked over and overlooked and we stand in the gap as an advocate. It's speaking out publicly, even politically, like on a national scale, local scale, it's speaking out against abortion and abuse and racism and crime of any kind. It's not slandering another person. It's not following in gossip. It's living the truth. But here's the big one. Watch this. Privately, publicly, you're going to love this one. It is preaching too. I know what you're thinking. I'm not a preacher like you. I'm not talking about preaching a sermon. I'm talking about preaching to yourself. Okay, I wish I had time to do this, but again, you, you wanna go to lunch, but I will just, let me just shorten it. There are a lot of influences in our life. There's only one we control. In fact, I'll do it. I'll do it because we have a little time, but let me just take, because it's, so, it's such a good insight. I think, that, and it's not mine, I learned it for some, but, but here's the deal. Okay, there are three influences in every person's life. The devil, the world, and the, and the flesh. The devil, this is the Bible, three influences. Devil, the world, and flesh. World, flesh, and the devil. The first two we have no control over. The world I can't control. In fact, the world is, is influenced by Satan. So the system of Satan influences the world, this world that is fading away, falling apart. That's what the Bible said. So the world and the flesh I have no control over. The only influence I have control over is the narrative or the voice, you ready for this, or the MP3 reel that is on repeat in my mind. And if you're like me, I hate to admit it, it's sometimes negative, right? Sometimes negative. Friends, listen to me. We already have two enemies fighting us. Young people, listen to me. You already have outside sources you can't control trying to define you as a person. You better be speaking and preaching truth to the one you can control, which is the voice in your head. And here's the thing you need to remind yourself of. No devil, my inheritance is not on earth, it's in heaven. My reward is the riches of righteousness in Christ Jesus, and my future is not in this place, but in eternity. That's what you need to remind yourself of. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things, have been, I'm not the old man I used to be. I'm not who I will be, but I'm not what I once was, amen? I have passed away, why? Because I'm no longer a slave to the sin that crippled me because my hope is secure in Jesus Christ because my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price, so I'm gonna glorify God in my body. Why? Because I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me, and I know that nothing, nothing, nothing will separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus my Lord. See, that's what you gotta tell yourself. You tell yourself that, and the devil flees. Number three, final one, probably the most impactful. We have the courage to overcome. Uh, Matt Chandler, who's a friend of mine, who, who's actually coming to Long Hollow in November, by the way. Uh, he doesn't speak outside of church a lot, but Matt's gonna preach in the morning and then he's gonna do a, a revelation study at night, by the way. <laughs> he wrote a book called Overcomers based on this line. And it's the courage to overcome. What is the mark of a Christian on this, in this world today is this. We know that there is something better waiting for us tomorrow. And we know that we have overcome death, hell, and the grave because of Christ. Now, I've said this before, but I want you to lock in. I want you to lock in. Middle school, high school is listening to me. 
because you're gonna be tempted to think something else. And I'm here to tell you, this is the linchpin. Jesus Christ is unlike any other religious figure who has ever walked on planet earth. And a lost world does not get this and they never will, but you need to get this. Here's what the difference is. They don't understand. They'll say, well, what's the difference between Jesus and Buddha? They both were good teachers. And I would admit, yeah, Buddha has some good teaching. Or what about the ministry of, uh, of Muhammad in Islam? Jesus and Muhammad have similar, I would admit they have a similar ministry, yeah, at times. Well, what about the miracles of Moses or Elijah? I would admit they're similar miracles, but the difference is they don't understand why Jesus came. You gotta understand, Jesus came and performed miracles, he did. Jesus came and preached sermons, which he did. Jesus came and healed the sick, which he did. But Jesus came and did something they never could do. And that is he came to live a perfect life, to die on a cross, to go to heaven, to show us that we have hope in him if we believe in him and will live forever in eternity with him. That's why, look at me, being a Buddhist or a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness or a Jew or a Muslim won't save anybody. If you put your faith in those systems, they can't save, why? Because none of those religious figures conquered death, hell, and the grave. In fact, if you go to their tombs, you can still find their bones or the remains of their body. But I'm here to tell you, listen, I've been to the Holy Garden tomb. I've been to Jerusalem. I've seen the cave. Here's a picture. He ain't there, amen. He's risen and he's alive and he offers eternal life for anybody. Here's the good news. He offers eternal life for anybody who puts their faith in him. Now watch this. I set all that up to get here because that is what the angels in heaven knew when they shouted this praise. And I want you to help me. And I want you, let's stand. We're gonna close, we're gonna close by standing and we're gonna shout this to the Lord as our worship team comes. We're gonna read it together. We're gonna shout this to the Lord as a benediction of praise to God. So say it with me. The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have now come, stop there, has now come, not tomorrow. He's ruling and reigning now because why? The accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been, stop there, he's been what? Thrown down to earth, amen? They conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not love their lives to the point of death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you with great fury. Why? Because he knows his time is short. Friends, we win in the end. Like, that's it, that's it, we win. In the end, here's the deal. We have a lot, <laughs> we have a lot to be thankful for. See, this is why Jesus is worthy of our praise because he's the only one who's conquered death, hell, and the grave.